This is the integrated math 2 practice test for 10 Ranger TCAP, whatever. This is question number 31. It's the last one. The, they give you a quadratic function, x squared plus 8x plus 6, and they want you to rewrite the given function in an equivalent form that would reveal the vertex of the function. I only wish they had a form that revealed the vertex. Oh, they do. It's called vertex form. So vertex form is y is equal to a times x minus h squared plus k. There's a bunch of ways to get from a to b here. You could complete the square. Take uh, b over 2 and you end up with, in this case, 4. And also go ahead and do b to the second squared, so it's 4 squared, 16. The 16 is what I add to both sides. Sometimes I like to do this. Now this as a squared term, a sum of squares I suppose, uses this, so you do x plus 4 squared equals negative 16 plus, or negative 6 plus 16, x 16 gives you 10, sheesh, can't even talk today. Um, and if I get everything on the same side, so I'll subtract 10 from both sides, x plus 4 squared minus 10, because I'm subtracting 10, equals 0. If I set it up in this form, that's how I'd find solutions, so I can just make this a y um, if I was going to graph it, and then I'd be good to go. So I can make it y is equal to x plus 4 squared minus 10. So that's one way to do it. I would imagine that's probably the way they want you to do it. But that's the whole purpose of completing the square to find a vertex form. But I, then I, I did say there's like some other ways to do it. So let's look at some other ways to do it. I'm not against graphing. Nobody can ever claim that to be true. I like a visual reminder of things. Get my graph going here. I see my vertex at the bottom here. That's Since it's going down to this point and then back up, this would be a minimum value. So I can trace, and I'm looking for my minimum, so at 3. And I realize I have to start over because I clicked through trying to look like I knew what was going on. It asked for me for the left bound, so it's just any point to the left, any point to the right. And much like Goldilocks and three bears, guess right, just right. So somewhere in here. So it tells me that negative 3.9 repeating, so negative 4. And negative 10. That's my vertex. Now that I have that, I can put it right back into my equation for vertex form. K is K or OK, that's fine. So I'm just going to keep it the same. And then it's, what, the H? So the H looks like negative here, but because it's negative, it ends up being positive. X plus 4. Seem familiar? Just did it. And I can verify that here. If you have it and you're going to graph it, you might as well test your other answer. Just make it a point. Or minus 10, not plus 10. You're like, where's the other graph? It graphed right over top of it because it's the same thing. So unless you graph something insane that would be off the range here, off the rails too, um, then you're probably okay. What else? Anything else I can do? Sure. It's in standard form. Negative b over 2a. 
negative 4. So somewhere over here in negative 4 would be my axis of symmetry. To find my vertex, the y component of my vertex, I need to take negative 4 and substitute it back into the original equation, which is x squared plus 8x plus 6. That's supposed to be a 4, that's supposed to be a 6. Man, I'm running out of energy here. 16 plus, or sorry. Minus 32 plus 6. 16 and 6 is 22. Minus 32 gives me minus 10. So that means I have a vertex at negative 4 and then way down here at negative 10. And then I can go back through my whole uh, spiel about doing it in vertex form. Remember the K stays because it's okay. And then what the H? Which is heck, of course. Done. Three different ways to do it. That's a great, that's a lot of ways to do the same math problem, but whatever you like, now you have some options.